Hello, hello. I think we're live. Are we? I think so. Hello, hello. We are live. Yes. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this live. Hi, how are y'all? How are you doing, guys? Welcome. Welcome to this live. Hi. Today, we're just going to have a quick chat. I just want to share with you all some tips, some quick tips uh, to learn a language. Things that helped me that hopefully will help you too to learn English or any, any other language that you might be interested in learning. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Dave. Lots of different people. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining. And before, ciao. Someone sent a ciao or oh, from Cairo, sorry. Hello. So yeah, so before we go ahead and start it, just make sure you are following me on my other social medias as well, please. The links are all there in my bio. And if you're watching me from YouTube, the links are also there in the description uh, box. So yeah, so let's just talk about, um, and guys, feel free to send me any questions and also things that you do that helped you to learn English or any other language that might be useful for everybody here watching the live as well. Hello from Mexico and Peru. Hi guys, nice to see so many different people from different places. Oh wow, that's so cool. Okay, so let's go, let's start it. So um, I just want to share, as I said, some tips that really helped me to learn English. Um, I don't know if you know a bit of my story, but I moved to Ireland when I was 21 years old and I had almost zero English. Well, I had a basic, very basic English and I had to do everything and anything I could to learn as fast as I could to survive. Um, of course, when you're immersed in, in the culture and when you're living in a, a foreign country, you have to speed up um, and learn. But if you don't use some um, techniques and if you don't force yourself, it, you might take longer to learn. So if you use some of the, those tips that I'm going to share with you now, um, hopefully you'll be able to learn a bit quicker. Hello from Algeria. Oh, just hit the mic. Sorry. Indonesia. Oh, wow. Lots of different places. So my first um, tip to you guys is Learn everything and anything you can get your hands on. Really, anything. I started with um, kids' books because they were much easier to understand. They were made, well, they are made for kids to understand what's going on by the, the picture, by what's there on the picture, because most kids don't, when they're being alphabetized, they don't know how to read. So the, the books are very simple. And I help, it helped me a lot because I could understand the meaning of the words uh, and I could understand what um, the story was, even if my English wasn't very um, advanced, which wasn't. My English was very basic when I started with this kind of books. And then from there, I progressed once I mastered the kids' books. They're basically books that you read, you know, to toddlers, um, two, three, five years old. So once I mastered these books, I jumped to um, teenager books, things like novels, um, The Hunter Games, um, Harry Potter, The Maze Runner, those kind of novels that they also have movies based on these novels, the books. And also because of the movies that I had watched already, it made a lot easier um, for me to understand what the book was about because I already knew the story because of, from the movies. So that's something else as well. Watch the movie and then read the book about it. And then it will make it a lot easier for you to understand the book when you know the story um, from the movie. Also, but you don't have to read just books. You can read anything and everything. Change the um, settings of your phone to English or to any other language that you're trying to learn. Um, your social media, as I said, a newspaper, you can research, like Google any city of the world and Google what's happening there today. What's the story on, some, I don't know, New York. And you can read the newspaper of any places online. So 
any subject, any kind of, um, a, from the easiest thing, like kids' books, to most complicated things, depending on your level of English. So you know your level. You look for things that will be um, not easy, but kind of acceptable within your with your level. You also don't want to go too easy and not too hard that you won't understand anything. So find a, a middle ground where you can push yourself, but at the same time, don't push too hard that you won't understand anything. Sorry if I'm missing any of the questions. My voice is echoing on YouTube. Oh, sorry, I don't know how to fix that now. I'm using a different mic on YouTube. I'll check that for next time. And let me just see. Practicing by chatting. Yes, that's one of the things as well that I'm going to mention. So reading anything that you can, okay? Even like a sip. Sorry, I'm hitting the mic all the time. Even cereal box, anything. If you're if you're sitting down in, in the subway and you see a sign explaining the roots of the subway and I don't know anything really that is in English, read it. It is really helpful. You might not notice the difference, but you do learn a lot of new vocabulary from reading. And the second second tip is also to improve the vocabulary. It, it, it's part of the reading. Write down anything that you learn that is new to you. So if it's a different, if it's a new word or a new vocabulary, um, write it down. Nowadays there are so many options. You can have a notebook or you can just write it down in your phone. There's so many tools we can use to write things down. So do this because we think we can, we, we hold a lot of information during the day. We see so much on our phones, on our day-to-day, -day, you know, there's so much going on all the time in our lives and our brain won't, won't be able to hold all the information that we receive in a day. So if you do see a new word, a new vocabulary, anything new to you that you don't understand or you do understand but it's new, Write it down and you will come back to it later on your notes. Read them and you will remember them after. This is really helpful as well. So do write down all the new vocabulary, new words that you see on your day to day, uh, on your daily basis, especially when you're reading. Um, also, let me just see, I think I'm missing some of the questions. If I do, guys, just send them again because. Oh, okay. No problem. Hello, everybody. Make sure you're following me there on the other social social media as well, please. The links are in my bio. And thanks for watching, guys. Okay. Um, tip number three is talk to real humans. <laughs> um, I think nowadays as well, there's so many tools that we can meet other people and talk to them face to face. There is a an app. I, they are not sponsoring me on anything, but uh, I think you all know it's Omegle, and there are probably others as well um, that you can go live and chat to anyone. And you know that's the best way to practice. It is practicing. You have to start speaking at some point. And I know um, this is the most difficult part to most English learners. It was to me at least. Um, because a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I understand this. I can read this. I understand what they're saying, but I can't speak. That's because, especially when you don't live in, in an English-speaking country, you don't have much opportunities to practice your speaking. So it is hard to kind of unlock this confidence to start speaking. And if you don't start speaking, you won't, you won't unlock this confidence ever. So start speaking. That's the only way you will start feeling more confident. Even if you do make mistakes, this will happen. It always happens. It will always will. So don't worry about making mistakes because you're not a native speaker. So if that happens, I'm sure whoever is listening to you will understand you're not a native speaker. So get start to talk to people. 
Um, and as I said, like Omegle, it's a very nice way to talk to real people and you can choose the subject that you like to talk about and find other people with the same interests as you. And I'm sure there are other ways as well of talking to real people, especially if you're living abroad. Um, but that's one of the things because you only get confidence in speaking when you start speaking. And it is the hardest part. I, at least to me, it was the hardest part, part start to speak because I was always afraid of making a mistake or being judged by what I was saying. Um, so yeah, I, I think a lot of people share the same, the same feeling of um, being afraid of being judged for a mistake or, you know. So don't be afraid. Just start speaking because you have to practice. Well, so if you like to speak like a native speaker first, hold your horses. <laughs> it's depending on your age, depending on your level of um, level of, of the deepness <laughs> that you are in the language. I don't know if that's even a word, but um, if you're immersed in, in, in English or in any other language that you're trying to learn, if you're immersed, of course, it's easier for you to try um, to get how to speak like a native speaker. But if you're not a nat native speaker, you will never master 100% hitting the microphone all the time. Um, so don't worry about accent. Don't worry about not making mistakes because mistakes will always happen and our accent will always reflect where we are from. So we will never lose 100% our original accent. I'm from Brazil. I have an accent there. So no matter how hard I try to speak like a native speaker, uh, I don't even try anymore. I, I did. I did, uh, I did at some point. But um, I don't try to speak like a native but I try to speak clear, at least when I remember. I think now I, tr I speak faster. But when I was uh, trying to learn, um, I was focusing more on speaking clearly than um, more like a native speaker, like with, with their accent. Also because there are so many different accents. So many countries speak English with different accents. The accent in the UK is different from, from the accent in the US and the one in Canada, the one in um, South Africa. So there's so many different English accents. Um, so you don't really need to speak like a native. You just need to speak with confidence, um, with, a, with a clear English that anyone can understand you. So, yeah. Um, where did I stop? Okay. So I think let's go to number three. Number three is to um, immerse yourself, as I said before, but also with listening. Before we were talking about reading, um, speaking, but also it's important to practice your listening because from the listening, you also get a lot of more vocabulary. So subscribe yourself to anything that it is of your interest. So if you like cooking, if you like um, blogging, or if you like politics, subscribe yourself in um, all the English, um, not English, all this, the channels that you can, that you talk about the subject that you like. So there, you can sub subscribe to YouTube channels, uh, podcast, um, you know, there's so many options out there today as well. So subscribe to anything that you can listen in English. And especially if it is in a subject that you enjoy to listen to, because it will make things easier for you to be more engaged. Because if you're watching something that is not of your interest, you won't be engaged. And you soon will want to be moving on to something else. Um, I'm getting some questions, I think, or some comments. Let me just try to read some. Exactly. Someone just said there's something very important. I'll read it. Ma sorry. Mejita. Hopefully I'm saying that right. So she said, I never think about grammar and accent, even my mistakes when I'm still learning English. 
because when I think about, then I never speak and I can't improve. I'm enjoying the process. Exactly. That's really good. Thank you for this comment. That's exactly the thing. If you think too much about accent, about um, not making mistakes, you will forget about everything else and you, you freeze. You won't feel relaxed to speak because you'll be thinking on the bad things that could happen if you speak if you speak something wrong if you say something wrong so just try to relax don't try to have a certain accent don't think about the mistakes you could be making just try to relax enjoy the process and speak thanks so much for this comment it was really good let me go back to there okay so next guys let me drink some water drink some water Drink some more because it's important. Cheers. You should all be drinking some water too. It's important. Okay. Hello from Israel. Hi. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining. It's very good to have you all here. Um, next is my problem is practice. I know that's the biggest problem, I think, for everyone, because if you're not living in an English-speaking country, like I am living in Ireland, if you don't have this opportunity, um, it's harder to have other people to, to speak to. So that's why I was ta uh, telling you about Omegle. Um, you probably all know about this website already, but if you don't, I can write it down somewhere let me just see if I can drop it in here. Hold on. I'm typing. They're not sponsoring me, though. If they want it. I think that's, yeah, I think that's the spelling. It's a website where you can chat in real time with other people from anywhere in the world. So you can talk to them and I suppose you won't feel so nervous when you're talking one-on-one -on -one with one person that you don't even know. So I think it's easier to talk to a stranger than talking to a friend, for instance. If I had a friend um, who I know that speaks English as well, I think I would kind of be more embarrassed to speak to my friend than speaking to a stranger. So go, go on those kind of websites um, and you can speak to anyone that you don't know, but speak. That's where you have to start. So yeah, so it's speaking, it's very important. If you don't practice, you'll never feel confident enough to, you know, to speak to anyone. So that's where you have to start is just speak. <laughs> Once you have enough, even if you don't have enough vocabulary, if you have the basics, if you know how to ask simple things, just start from there. Right. Um, my next tip is go abroad. That's, I think that's the easiest way to learn. It's going abroad. I know it's not reachable to everybody. Some people can't go abroad. Sometimes it's expensive to go abroad. Um, yes, but if you can, if you have this opportunity, go abroad because you will be completely immersed in the culture, in the language. You will have to go to the supermarket. You'll have to go to the pharmacy. I had to Google things like how to ask for medicine when I came here. It's you, you get in situations that you would never imagine of before getting out of your country. So once you are living abroad, you get into so many situations that you have to speak and you have to put yourself like in there, you have to put yourself there. You have to speak. So there are things that you cannot, um, avoid so living abroad to me is the best easiest and fastest way of learning English although it's not the only one so depending on yourself and your um your strength and dedication and you know because also you have to have something very very straight in your in your mind when you're learning a language what motivates you to learn this language because if you don't have a big enough motivation 
you probably will drop the learning very quickly. So make sure the, the, the thing that um, motivates you is something that is strong to you and you will always want to achieve that. Uh, so yeah, motivation also, it's very important. So yeah, living abroad, okay, that's something, but also it's not the only thing. And let me just see, I had some other comments. Yeah, so someone here is Nawaf. Nawaf, sorry if I'm not pronouncing it that right. She's going to Leeds to study for six months. That's excellent. And also, you're probably going to be staying in a host family. Um, that's something very good as well for you to practice when you go abroad. You normally stay with a host family if you're going like with the English language school to learn English. So you can stay with a host family or you can stay in a student residence where you're going to be staying with other students. Um, other students are good as well. It's very good because you will always be practicing. And you will have to be speaking all the time anyways. But when you are with a host family, you are um, in the morning, from more, well, in the morning, you'll have breakfast with the family that is an, uh, made of native speakers. So you'll be hearing to vocabulary that they use in, in the home. So it is a different vocabulary that you would be using with your friends in school. So it's very good because different places, different vocabulary that you will be listening to and you'll be gaining. So also you will be sharing with the family, you'll be sharing culture, you'll be sharing other things other than English. Um, yeah, so moving abroad, even if it's for a short while, it's my, in my opinion, it's the best way of learning. But again, not the only one. Someone said, we need F grammar, we need vocabulary. Well, yes, we need a lot of vocabulary, but we can't forget about grammar because otherwise we would be speaking like, how can I say that without being offensive? We would sound very strange <laughs> with a lot of vocabulary, but no grammar at all. Um, Well, I won't, if someone's asking to speak to me, I, pro I probably won't open the live to speak with, uh, with you guys because I won't stay here for too long. But I do want you guys to send your questions, send your messages, and go on, go on Omegle. Contact someone that is here also in this live and ask them for, ask if they want to go for a chat. Kurdistan, wow. A lot of different places. That's so cool. Whew. More water. Hello. Drink some water, guys. I'm speaking too much. Okay, I think we have been here for half an hour. So let's not keep you for too long. Let's finish this. My next tip to you guys. If you have a teacher, if you are in a, in a class group, um, and if you have a, even a private teacher or a class group teacher, ask questions. Um, when you are in class, if you have the opportunity of having classes, ask questions, really. Um, I, I say for myself, when I was in class, I was very shy and I wouldn't like to other people to know what my questions are and what, you know, I think there was a bit of insecurity there because was afraid of making mistakes and I didn't want to speak in front of everybody. So I didn't make questions when I should have. So when you're in class, if you have the opportunity of being in class, learning English or learning on any other language or any other thing, ask questions. It is important because when you do ask questions, you kind of, um, this kind of gets more stuck in your head if you know what I mean. So if you ask something that is difficult to you and you find out after what that means or, or the answer for this question, it will stick to your head. Also, when you get into a situation when it's embarrassing to you, this happened to me as well. I can't remember exactly what the, the word was, but it did happen to me that I was in a situation where I, um, I said something wrong 
and I was corrected. And then I never forgot about, well, I just remembered. See, I said I forgot, but then I just remembered. There is, in Portuguese, in English, there are some words that they are similar. They sound similar, but they mean different things. So I said to a Irish person who speaks also Portuguese, and they knew why I got confused. So I told him that I uh, pretend to start college when I meant that I intend to start college. Anyways, he correct me straight away. So it was a little bit embarrassing, although I am very thankful to him because I did learn that intent and pretend are two different things and they have different meanings. Anyway, so when you're speaking, so when you're immersed in a situation where you do have to speak with other people and you do make mistakes and you get corrected, you definitely won't forget about this word and never again. So when you make mistakes, it's when you learn the most. So that's why you have to speak because finding out the things that you're getting wrong on or at, <laughs> you um, that's where you will be learning the most for sure. Right, so my next tip to you guys is um, take leads from the stars. What I mean by that is if you like, watching TV series, watching movies, or listening to songs. Take the thing that you like the most and use this as a tool for you to learn. I like to use music. Uh, I used music before a lot in the past. So the way I do is that's why I even have here in the channel, I have the videos um, to learn with music. So try to learn, try, try to listen to songs, preferably slowly songs because then you can understand better listen to songs try to understand them if you don't understand them you probably won't understand everything so go back to the beginning and listen and read the the lyrics of the song so we'll, you will start to make more sense of what you're saying of what of what you're hearing once you read you will kind of understand better what you hear same with uh, movies when you're watching a movie with subtitles, well, first of all, start with subtitles, okay? Watching English with English subtitles. And then once you're mastering this, you can skip to watching a movie or TV series all in English. It's a little harder, but also you have to push yourself. You can't be too comfortable when you're learning something because if it is too comfortable, that means it's too easy. It has you have to push yourself a little bit, you know. Uh, I remember when I got here to Ireland um, over eleven years ago. There was um, I had a computer, but I think internet wasn't as easy as it is nowadays. I suppose, and I, I well, I didn't know any websites to go and watch movies in my own language or with subtitles. So I was watching TV. I was watching a movie with friends. And uh, it was all in English. And I was so frustrated because I didn't understand a word. Well, maybe one or two. But uh, the context of the whole movie, I could not understand. So I got very frustrated. I cried a lot that day. Um, but what I mean with that is, if you don't push yourself, I eventually learned, right? So if you don't push yourself to learn, if you're too comfortable when you're learning something, that means it's probably not working or you taking too easy. And if you push yourself, you will learn more and faster. Hold on, I need to cough. <coughs> Sorry. Speaking too much, guys. I didn't realize I was going to speak that much today. Did you drink water there? That's your break for you to get some water. Hi from Egypt, from Athens, and from... Wow, so many different places from Canada. Where else? So many different places. Thank you guys from Morocco, I think. From Saudi Arabia. Salam alaikum. Hey, okay guys, thanks for joining. From Germany, I was going to attempt to say something in German, but I just forgot. I was going to say Guten Tag, but I think that's not very right. Um, 
yeah so my next one is um start with something that you really you really lead start with something that you really need to focus on so if you are for instance going abroad to study english focus on things that you will be learning in school um, or with the environment that you will be immersed in hello from turkey from canada again hello from hawaii um ethiopia that's so cool. Hi, guys. Ugur City. Yeah, so... Um, where did I stop? <laughs> yeah, so focus on things that you will need. Um, so if you're going abroad to study, even if it's not to study English, just study, I don't know, master's, a certain subject. Well, if you're going to study mas a master's degree, you probably are advanced in English already. So forget about that. But if you were, anyways, try to focus on, if you need to brush up your English for a job interview, focus on a business English, things that you'll be using, vocabulary that you'll be using for the interview. So focus on that. Don't try to learn everything at the same time because you will get into a mess, you know, because we can't, our brain can, can't just hold all the information that we receive all day. So try to learn a few things at once so try to get into one subject master this and then jump to another thing if that makes sense let me just see i do have a youtube channel yes it's the link is in my bio please go and subscribe there too greetings from colombia hello hi como estas colombiano uh from Morocco, Indonesia. I see some people from Brazil too. That's great, thank you. And uh, last one, and then I have a quick surprise if we have some time, I think we do. I might have a guest here today. I don't know if, if he's still there, but I will call him to join the, the live for a quick chat. Um, yeah, so my last one, don't kick yourself when you're down. <laughs> so learning is a process and it can be very hard at times, uh, but don't give up and especially don't put yourself down. Never say that oh, I'm not learning, I'll never speak English. Don't say that because this will just blur your understanding of your progress. Okay, so believe more in yourself and... Um, Go in front of the mirror and tell yourself, you can do this, you will learn English or you will learn any language that you want to learn and focus, okay? Believe more in yourself and you can do this. Don't give up, right? Um, hello from America. And I'll see, uh, I might have a guest here that will join me now. Oh, he's still here. My friend, I'll invite now my friend from the US. He lives in Hawaii, a very nice place in Hawaii, and he is a book writer, and I think his English is so easy to understand, so I love call him, calling him here in the lives videos for you guys to listen to his accent and to his English, because I think so easy and clear to understand his English. I think you will enjoy this. So I'll call him to join the live now. I always forget how to do this. Um, but let's go. Hold on, guys. Bear with me for a sec. Hold on. Okay. Oh. Hello from Uzbekistan. Hey, Alex. Hey. Aloha. Why I'm not? Oh, okay. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm uh, practicing ukulele. Oh, are you gonna sing it for us today? Sing and play. Not play, perhaps. Yeah, playing and singing are challenging. Mm -hmm. it, they make it look so easy, but some people can do it automatically, and others 
like myself need to do like learning a language one part at a time and then you get that down and then you feel enough courage and confidence to go to the other part then you're making beautiful music exactly exactly i have a guitar here that i still trying to you know i have to dedicate more time to it but yes it's very hard to try and sing and, and play at the same time but um as you said it's a process try to focus in one thing at, at, at one time and eventually things will get there Bingo. thank you so much for joining me today i know it's yeah. still early there but i won't take too much of a time i just wanted you to tell people here today we have 39 people here watching us now so i just want you to introduce yourself what you do etc um or even tell one of your stories from one of your trips because i think as i was saying before you joined in your english is so easy to understand and i think for a non-native speaker it's very good when we can hear a nice english day so like you know clear so yes please and i'll drink some well, water. Uh you were saying that one of the best ways to learn a language is to get immersed into it and i can tell you from firsthand as an american who we only speak american <laughs> that the, the the best way was when i decided to go to europe and the way i decided to go to europe is you know people think uh i think some people think in america everybody's got like all kinds of wealth and money But for the ones who don't, we have uh, um, smarts, <laughs> intelligence. So I, I joined a program called WorkAway. And this program is worldwide. So picture a place you want to travel to. And this program, if there's a house there with somebody who needs some kind of assistance, like a babysitter or somebody to pull weeds in the garden, clean dishes, whatever. You can stay in that home and get fed and a, a place to stay. In return, you give back 20 hours of your personal time because you always have to give back when you receive. That's just the law of nature. And, um, and then the rest of your time, you can do whatever you like. And the thing that I loved is I use this program to travel to, uh, oh my gosh, Austria and Germany, Eastern Germany, in fact. Um, I've been several places with this, but Austria was my all time favorite because I did not pick a family in the city of Vienna. I picked a family in the country. Like there's nothing but cows and fields uh, of who knows what. <laughs> um, and it was so wonderful because I was living with a family of uh, three children and a husband and a wife and all of these animals and my job was to feed the chickens and the pigs i even had to pull feathers off of a dead chicken uh it was the things really we do. a learning <laughs> experience i think we're getting a little um i think you froze for a moment i hope i'm still getting through you are uh, anyway to me at least oh great <laughs> um but i wanted to learn german and german in austria is different than german in Germany. Uh, May I just like ask, TV. sorry, before you, you go to your learning experience, um, this program that you um, went to other countries on, how does it work? Do you, do you have to be an American to be traveling? Do you know where? Because it's very interesting for people here listening, I suppose. Uh, no, it's uh, you can be of any nationality because there are people that need work in France, there are people that need work in Brazil, um, what you would do, the, the website is called workaway.info, mm -hmm. I-N-F-O, like information, oh. but info, so mm -hmm. workaway.info, uh, I'll probably type it in the uh, comments, and what you do is, I think the, the membership fee was $35 for a year of membership. That's good. And with that membership, it opens you up to all of the places in the world that you can travel to. Are we doing okay with the signal? Yeah. You're sick. Okay. Um, so it, let's say you want to travel to Canada. You go to Canada and, or, and it'll bring up all of the families that are available in every city 
and it'll give a description of the family, uh, what their needs are, and there's also a section from other people, other worker wayers who have stayed with this family before who comment mm -hmm. honestly mm -hmm. on their experience. It's the way that travelers protect other travelers mm -hmm. because it's easy to get taken advantage of uh, when you're in another country. <laughs> Believe me, as an American, I never felt so vulnerable until I left America and I was like, oh my God. I think it's the same for all of us. <laughs> when we leave the comfort of our home, uh, we, oh we feel all gosh. the different feelings that we never felt before, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, another thing is that it also showed me some things about being American that I really didn't like and I didn't see them until I left my country and was outside of everything that I knew and and then I would run into other Americans and I was like wow this is what we're like huh <laughs> but it's a great way to expand your not only your language but your thinking and your mind so for anybody who is into that kind of uh, information or writing as my friend mentioned, I am a writer, and you can go to my page. It's Demetrius74, and I write about my philosophies of traveling because I'm a, a Sagittarius. That's my sun sign, and it's my rising sign. I, I am driven by Sagittarian energy because we are ruled by the hips, and the hips in the body are the center of motion. So we are either in motion in our body or in motion in our thinking, but we're always moving. And so I wanted to get to Europe so bad, just like I wanted to get to Hawaii so bad. I'm originally from Texas, and that's a long way from Hawaii. But I used my imagination, and somehow the universe listens, and I was lined up with an opportunity to go to Hawaii and I was in love because I felt the spirit of aloha. That's not just a nice word to say. It's not just doing this, throwing the shaka and saying aloha. It is literally a word that means the breath of life and sharing your uh, spirit of kindness, generosity, compassion with everybody you meet. So every time I start one of my videos, I always say aloha because when I arrived in Hawaii, the people who are native here, all the locals, made me feel the sense of love that I never felt from anywhere before and sincerity. And I said, whatever that is, no matter where I go or who I talk to, I'm going to send that back out to them. So I, I, you could t ask Diane. I was aloha, <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> all here and there. But um, yeah, does anybody have any questions or should we move on to something different? I think they're just very pleased to listen to you. You can move on uh, to your, to your I'm stories. Very to be here. I think so. I think we didn't get any questions so far. Um, oh, just what's the name of the program? So we can type it in. Uh, Maybe yes. can, do you want okay. me to type it in or do you want to type it in there? Uh, if you could type it in, that'd be wonderful. Thank Let you. me see. Just can't knock my phone down. So it's work away, right? Work away. Work away. Is there a dot? Work away dot. Yes. Dot info. Info. Yes. I suppose if they just Google this, they will be able to find it. Work away dot info. Yeah. Okay. There's also similar programs. One is called Wolfing. I think it belongs for work on a farm. <laughs> I think. Uh, which you can also do, uh, but farm life is really hard. In fact, I didn't know what hard work was until I left my country and saw how other people have to work just to make ends meet, as we say. You got a question uh, there. Yeah. Um, so they want to know if you did learn German at the end. Yeah, ich kann ein bisschen Deutsch sprechen. Es ist nicht so gut als aber ich kann lernen mit dieser, dieses App heißt Duolingo. I use the app called Duolingo to stay, keep the German that I do have fresh in my mind because 
there's no germ. Nobody's being charmed with in Hawaii, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> actually, that's not true. I ran into one lady, and it was amazing. Uh, it was like she was shocked, and I was shocked uh -huh. <laughs> that we could speak this language. And I chose German because I have some German blood in me. I did the 23 and Me and also Ancestry. I'm Basque, German, French, Spanish, Mexi Mexican. That's a, a mix. Uh, Native American. <laughs> Uh, I think some African <laughs> in there. Um, uh, and so, but the German, for whatever reason, just, I always enjoy the way it sounds. And it's such a hard language. It's not romantic like French or Portuguese. <laughs> it's German. But it's almost like I purposely picked something that was so difficult that I would feel more of a reward learning that than mm -hmm. I would Spanish, which I am going to learn. Um, and sure enough, more challenging. when I was in Germany and Austria speaking with people on the street and they were complimenting on me on my German and I, and just happy that I was trying, you know, most Americans have the reputation that we don't want to let any new information in because we live in such a rich environment, which is true. Um, but for those of us who do, uh, it's I'm an, an, I consider myself an ambassador of Aloha. And when I moved to Hawaii and I wanted to share this feeling, it didn't matter where I went. So whatever reputation that Americans had when I traveled, and I've heard of, <laughs> I've heard of some of the things, uh, they left or I left these people with a whole different impression because I'm hardworking. I am always willing to do my part and then some, I try not to complain, <laughs> I am human, um, but I'm always giving more than I'm taking and uh, I'm sharing the spirit of aloha and yeah, that's, uh, that's changed the world little by little, not by changing everybody else, but change yourself mm -hmm. and the world will follow. That's great. Well, will you have another question? People are really really excited that you're here and um, so she's asking you learn other languages based on passion or need if probably if you learned languages and based on passion or need what's what moves you to learn other languages passion yeah i i used to think in terms of need and as long as you are thinking in terms of need you're always going to need something but when you are living and searching and learning out of a state of passion, then it, it has a different value. For example, uh, in the United States, we have a military presence called the, the United States Marine Corps. I've never been a Marine or been in the, the military, but I thank these people all the time. And when you are becoming a Marine, you have two salaries, two forms of payment that you receive. Mm. The first one is from your government that you receive for the work you're doing. But the second one is a, that you don't get paid for is the learning to be a brother to your fellow uh, brother and sister Marines, learning to uh, belong to a group of people that have your back and you have theirs all the value in overcoming toughness and how that changes you and how you go off into the world a different person but you're always a marine mm -hmm. uh, that is the second form of payment so when you're doing something whether it's learning a language or writing a book do it for the sake of the work not the money it'll bring you or the prosperity or fame because that comes and goes when you do something for yourself, you are really giving something that of value to people that they feel it from your heart. There's, there's an expression we have in English called a hack. And a hack is somebody that does something because they think it's what the public will like or it'll make them money. But a professional writes with passion about what they love. And when you are putting that love into your own work, people feel that. And uh, I think, yeah, that's that's what I do. I learned. I I know that's a long answer, but 
<laughs> I learn for passion, not because I need. No, that's great. I suppose that also as an an America, you, if you think about it, you won't need really to learn. Well, not to, that you won't need, but you're kind of in a comfortable position because um, everybody else wants to learn English and you already speak English. So I think it's so interesting to see when someone that doesn't need to learn English or to learn a different language, you know, try to learn some a new language. Or even when I see someone learning Portuguese, there's no need to learn Portuguese. Only Brazil and a few other places speaks Portuguese. Um, but I think so cool to see people trying to speak it. There's a lot of um, Irish people here speaking Portuguese nowadays as well, which is very cool. Um, and I just, yes, when you learn from from passion, it is something different and special. I think uh, when I was younger, I was frustrated that I didn't know English and I wanted to have a learned in a place where English would be my my mother language, um, which didn't happen, obviously. I was born in Brazil. Um, but I always wanted to learn English. Although when I did eventually learn, I was being more forced than anything because it was here. I had to learn because otherwise I wouldn't survive. Um, but yeah, it was a different feeling because I had to learn under pressure. And I suppose when you're learning with passion because you want, I think it's also easier. I think things, it's more fluid, I think. But anyways, when you do eventually learn, it's so satisfying anyways. So it's... It's good to give yourself this reward of, you know, showing yourself that you can do something, that you can learn something, new things. And we, we should always be learning new things to, you know, practice the brain. It's this muscle should never stop practicing, should never stop doing things with our brains. <laughs> exactly. You said something that struck a chord with me and that, you know, there's something to the effect of there's a struggle between it an extra struggle when you don't need to learn with pressure uh, but I, but you know me and you've seen me on my travels and um i was definitely under pressure when i was following my passion i am what you would call a tramp that's a, a, a american word that has some people think it's uh means one thing i'll tell you what it means right now a tramp or a super tramp in my case is somebody who is not concerned with so much a career or having a, a comfortable life as they are concerned with learning about themselves. And so what the lifestyle that I chose to live, it's not for everyone and it's very difficult, I can tell you from experience, but uh, is that of a tramp where mm -hmm. you work, you travel, where there's a need, you, you give your work, you're exchanging energy so that you can just be in another place or learn from another person. And a lot of times I've done this work for free, just what we call bartering, trading, a roof over my head and food to eat for a place to stay just so I could go to that place. And, and it was a lot of survival too. I, I was born uh, poor and <laughs> which Funny enough, a poor American is still quite wealthy when the, the most of the world is with a very few money. But being in a wealthy country as a poor person is like having no options. You feel stuck. But I thankfully was raised by a strong mother and she taught me to cook, to clean, to sew my own buttons on my shirt because she says, if you ever fall on hard times or go through something difficult, you can go and cut somebody's grass. You can go and clean somebody's house. And that's what I've done. Uh, <laughs> I've cleaned houses. I've uh, done repair work. I've really lived a life that a lot of people, It, it's it's not for everyone, like I said, but what it is giving me back is all of this richness that I can now share through my writing, through my speaking, and uh, thankfully retain, well, find, maintain, and flourish the kinds of friendships like Diane and I have. Uh, this is a person who has a heart of gold and everything that she's doing for all of you comes right from her heart. 
So um, she's a wonderful human being. You're going to learn so much, and I'm happy to be of service today and whenever y'all should need me in the future. Thank you so much, and also all of you that are watching now, go follow Alex because he has some very deep thoughts that they sh he shares there um, on his videos, um, and also your book. So if you want to talk about your book as well, we can end with that. And yeah, do you want to talk about your book a little? Sure. It's funny uh, you mentioned that because um, I wrote a book in two thousand. I started writing a book in two thousand nine finished it in 2012 and then published it myself in 2013 and I was just wanting to see how it would do like would people like it would they not and over the years when you do something and then you walk away from it and you come back to it life has a way of giving you a fresh set of eyes and when I can tell you the eyes that I had in 2019 and the eyes that I have now in 2023 are entirely different. And so um, I've made a choice to finally go back and rewrite my book, not rewrite it, but edit it, mm -hmm. take out some of the fat, uh, just make it cleaner because I want to create a better product so that I can have opportunities with better publishers, um, have it translated into other languages, but I'm giving uh, the best of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that you create in your life should have your signature of quality. So then people see that creation, they'll be like, that's a Diane job, or that's an Alexander job. And um, yes, yeah, so my book is about my memoirs, a memoir is a book about somebody reflecting on their past, uh, thinking about the, their past and sharing what they went through. So my book is a memoir, and it's about growing up with a mother who suffered from multiple personality disorder. That's uh, one person that has one body, but their mind is divided into several different personalities. And as a little kid, this was terrifying and I had was just overwhelmed and in over my head every day. Um, but that was also the best gift that life could have given me. That's what my mother used to always tell me to gladly accept into your life everything that comes your way because what could better suit your needs? And if I had, you know, when I was going through the struggles, I was like, why this life? Why me? But on the other side of your pain is heaven, which is right here on earth. And now I look at those same struggles with a fresh set of eyes and say, of course me, I have a, a big mission in this life. So I needed to be trained and conditioned and nobody could teach me this from a book. So I had to put in the work and here I am. And here we all are because all of you have had some form of struggle. If you're human, you know what it's like to have pain. You know what it's like to cry uh, and you just have no control. But that's also the greatest thing because perhaps we need the tears to wash away the dirt from our eyes so we can see the world anew. And so every time you're crying and every time you're breaking down, that's just uh, you breaking out of your shell. So. Yeah, oh, beautiful words. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you so much, Alex, for being here. It's always a pleasure. Um, you're a good friend and you're always welcomed. Thank you, everyone that watched it. And please go follow Alex as well. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> yes. Mahalo, which is thank you in Hawaiian. Mahalo. Okay. And aloha. Então, thank you and obrigada in Portuguese. <laughs> Thank you. See you, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Bye. Hope you all enjoyed. Bye bye. Bye. Here to you guys. Bye bye. Bye on YouTube.